Now, I never actually promised that we wouldn't make any more hooks on the Sunday morning videos. It's not hook of the week again, but I do need some hooks. I'm John Switzer. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. And yes, today we're going to make a hook, and it's a fairly simple hook, but I need several of them. And this is a hook that will go over a 2x, in this case I'm going to use it on a 2x6, but you could size this for anything you want. And we have a garden enclosure that is framed around so that you can hang various things on it like hail guards and shade cloth, stuff like that. And we need about four or six of these. I haven't decided exactly how many yet. So we can hang some shade cloth. As the summer comes on in full force, the sun is intense and the plants don't like it. So this is just a simple way to hang the shade cloth. No nails, no screws, nothing put into the bolt. And it'll be easy to take it on and off if you don't need it every day. But in the spirit of the previous Hook of the Week series, we're still making this out of stuff from the scrap buckets. This is some material that came from those great big cable spool bolts. And I found some of those that were all the same diameter. And I've cut them to length. And to figure out what my length was, the first thing I did was make a hook. And as I did this, I made several different pieces to different stages of the hook. And that way, when I got to this stage and I knew how long I needed this to be, I don't have to worry about how long this is. I don't have to measure that, although it wouldn't be hard to do. But because I already knew what I had done in this step, I can go from this step and then work backwards till I figure out what my cut length needed to be. So I've got my last pieces cut and some of the hooks are just almost finished. So this is roughly 3 8 or 10 millimeter round bar. I don't think it's exact size, but it's close enough. And they're just a hair over 12 inches long, which makes them 310 millimeters long. So I'm going to go light the coal forge and we can get to work and we can finish these. And maybe for tomorrow when the sun comes out, I can finally get that piece of shade cloth up. Now this project starts with just a very short, blunt taper. I don't want any kind of a curly cue or flare or fishtail or anything like that that's going to make it hard to get through the grommet on that shade cloth. But putting some sort of an end just makes it look more refined, more finished, gives us a little bit of interest. As usual, we'll go square, then octagon, and we'll round it up. And I'm going to put just a little bit of a bend in it, again, just to make it look more graceful in the finished hook. That'll be this little section of the hook right there. Just bend this in a jig here, that way they can all be the same. If it doesn't wrap smoothly, it's okay to resort to a hammer and make sure they're nice plain through here. That's all we need to do to that end. That's done. Next we're going to flatten the other end, but I'll go ahead and bend up this other hook first. not going to need to be hammered on and it looks nice and straight and in line. Now as I flatten this piece and technically it probably doesn't have to be flattened I just like the look of it better I want to keep it towards the back of the hook so that when it slides in here everything is kind of flush across here even though I'm bending it pretty much right there. I think that'll just make it a little bit cleaner and neater. And I will use my original sample to judge how much I need there. And start forming a little shoulder. It's pretty cool right there. so I'll just establish that and then get it hot again. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and lay that out for all of these. And that way, 
they should all look the same. Not that it matters if there's a little bit of difference there. Certainly won't make the hook useless. Again, I don't know if this really has to be flat. I just like the looks of it. Bring everything back to parallel as it bulges unevenly from the hammer blows. Knock the corners off there a little bit. If you need to, you can hit it with a file, but this is a project that ideally you do 100% right here at the anvil. So now that one's ready to bend. Let's go ahead and finish the other two. If you're working multiples of things like this in a coal fire, make sure you turn the blower off when you go to the anvil, otherwise you're liable to burn up the one you left behind. Just smoothing it up at this low heat, no real forging happening. Again, I'm going to kind of kick this over just so it's easier to get on the 2 by I'm going to go ahead and put a 90 degree bend in that. This might as well come all the way up. A lot of this isn't all that critical. It's going to hang on the board no matter what you do with it, as long as it's not too small. But I like to make them kind of neat. And I have this thing that's just welded up out of some inch and a half tubing. Didn't have rectangular tubing when I made this, so I cut a slice off and welded that to it because whatever I made this for, I needed both inch and a half and whatever that dimension is. Today I just need the inch and a half. And to get this to come out the way I want it to, I'll just vice grip it up there. Tap that around and this should be the finished hook, as long as it's straight. Now it's straight.
Sometimes this stuff would be easier if you had four hands, but after you've done a few of them, it gets a little bit easier. Yeah, so that's kind of wonky there. If you can't straighten it this way, just go put it in the vise and should be able to straighten it pretty easily. So let's take this one to the vise and just see how easy that is. Probably doesn't need to be very hot to bring this back in line. In fact, we might even be able to do it cold. The other thing you might want to do is just check to make sure it's in line this way and move the tip over if it needs it. Well, I realize this was kind of a quick and simple project, but sometimes it's one of the advantages to having a blacksmith shop available. You can make the things you need. I doubt that I would have been able to find anything at all like these hooks at any of the local hardware stores, big box stores, and probably not even shopping online unless another blacksmith were already making them. And because this probably took less than a half an hour to make four hooks, I'm still ahead time-wise because it's a half hour drive to town. I'd have to go shopping and then drive a half hour back. So it's at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So I've saved myself at least an hour and I've got exactly what I think I want, but it's probably a good idea to go try these out where they go. So join me outside and we'll take a look and see how these work. So if you were wondering, shade cloth is just this kind of a mesh fabric and it's rated at various degrees of shade. I'm not sure what this is. Stuff that's already on here is only like 30% shade, so it's not quite enough some days. But if the hooks work, we should just be able to stick these up here, hang that grommet over there, That means this is all nicely adjustable and we can move it wherever we need to. And I may even go ahead and make some more hooks for like this so we can hang things other places on this little structure. And if you'd like to know more about this little thing that I've built here to help make gardening at high altitude where we've got animals that would like to eat a lot of what's in our garden, I'll go ahead and link to a video up here about that when I started to build it. In fact, I'll probably do an update video on that on the other channel. In fact, both of these videos are on the other channel. But I'll try and do an update over there now that the structure is complete and we've actually got some things growing and we might actually get some vegetables this year. As I mentioned in the last video here at Black Bear Forge, I'm going to cut back a little bit on how often I make videos so it may be next Sunday before we see another video. So if I don't get anything posted sooner, look for me next Sunday. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.